Okay, and um, thanks everyone for joining. I know Saturdays afternoon, there's a lot of better things to do. Um, uh, but I hope it is worth your time to just get a sense of what is Psycho personally. So that's what I'm going to cover today. Um, I know that there are a lot of uh, sessions, I mean, very good sessions. I think Kiran and a few others have already given on Psycho CDP, personalization model, and a few other things and various SUG groups. So even I had followed almost all of them. So I'm trying to cover something like where I feel there was a gap from me, for my understanding when I was learning. So I try to fill that gap. So I don't want to repeat the same things again and again. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's uh, move on. Um, uh, yeah, I'll skip this uh, anyway, uh, Rohan has covered, but um, just to one more piece, I, I live in Melbourne, so I work in ASIC, so as a tech lead currently. I was an MVP before, not now. I was an MVP before. I've been doing only .NET and Sidecore. I mean, Sidecore from 2015 around that time, but .NET from uh, being a fresher. So, quick agenda. There is like slight change on the agenda, which I had given to SUG Pune. Not one or two items, not much. So I saw after after uh, giving and after preparing, I saw like maybe some are not relevant. So we'll just briefly cover what is CDP, what is personalized and all. And uh, we'll look at straight away, how do we integrate with the personalized? And what are the building blocks in the personalized? And what role a developer plays in part of a site co personalized implementations? And few demos in, in um, overall through. Uh, just a quick point also, I did a recent implementation on the site code personalized. So I'll be sharing most of the things on from that experience as well. And also I'm not covering anything related to CDP. So that's why I explicitly mentioned in the title as well, it is site code personalized. So um, uh, please bear in mind. Okay, so CDP. Uh, just a just a brief knowing what is CDP will make sense for us. Uh, a, a customer data platform is a marketing technology that unifies a company's customer data from marketing and other channels to enable customer modeling and to optimize the timing and targeting of messages and offers. It is pretty mouthful. Uh, I just pasted from Gartner, but I'll try to um, analyze this for us, like in a developer terms, what does it mean? So there is a customer data platform. So what does the customer represent here? I mean, customer can be any from for any of these businesses. So if you say e-commerce website, there will be like uh, um, whoever is going to purchase the things on their website. So those will be customers. So or if I'm a financial institutions, maybe whoever is doing a stock brokering or something else on my website, that will be my uh, users, my customers. So mainly in terms of cdp cdp pictures how does it identify so we identify with any of this um, um, personally identifiable information pii data or sitco i like in i like sitco cdp and personally in one aspect is that you don't need uh, pii data as well you can men mention or you can identify a user using custom identifiers as well if you have some uh, some id assigned to a particular customer in terms of yours, not using any of the personally identifiable information like email, name, or age, or whatever, uh, date of birth, or something combination. So customer identifier also can be used in the CDPs and also data extensions. So this, this whole thing you can consider as like, if you are coming from XP platforms, like Core XP, you have XConnect contact. So that's contact has like particular, um, fields and properties, right? And you extend it to add your own uh, data that would be X, con X connect contact facets. Something like that here as well. You are um, extending the data of customer, which is predefined comes with, CDP comes with predefined fields, but you are extending it by giving a lot of your own fields as well. That just, you can define it. Okay, but th this is the identification of customer, but what are the information it can have CDP? It has all the first party information. 
not like browsing or not like getting this information from any third party systems it is mainly like first party information like when the customer interact with your with your business be it offline or online all the channels you can get like first party data and get in get into site core not site core any customer data platform this this data can be a behavioral or transactional behavior in a sense that what you are doing on the website maybe you are browsing something you are viewing uh, you are clicking something or all these things and also transactional in nature like if it is a e-commerce site like you are buying something you are adding something to the cart so all these are transactional in nature so it 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 can contain everything and also all the channels it can be offline it can be online online means like real time you will be inputting or feeding the data into the cdp but if it is offline most of the, i mean all the systems will provide you a batch way of inputting all this customer data information so maybe you have offline systems or you have some other systems where you aggregate all the data and you will be you can input in using an apis so that would be the one so overall you have a customer and all his or her related information uh, how they are interacting with your business or products will be recorded into cdp which can be used by marketers if i go further uh, there is a big definition here all the things but i'll sum it up simply if you have worked on sitecore xp again we used to implement rule based personalizations adapt to rule based means where you have a sitecore rule editor where you configure the rules and personalization if it is adapt to i don't know if you have worked on profile cards pattern cards so you try to give okay if this browser belongs to particular profiles and then you can show them some personalization and you also have a ab testing as well there like multivariate testing and all similar like that you have a personalized where all these features experiences experiences here comes some kind of a personalizations uh, uh, experiments are more like uh, ab testing i'll come back to the questions later i'll just go to the flow i think i saw some chat popped up um experiences are more like rule based adaptive personalization all these kinds experiments are more ab testing i believe personalize has a lot of things but ultimately these two are the main uh, things which can serve the customers so providing the uni channel experience uh, i mean omni channel or one to one experiences also Uh, if you are not aware, like Sitecore CDP or personalized or SaaS based products, so which got acquired by Sitecore from I think Boxover, so it's a two products, but mostly we assume that it's like one product. So this picture, I think it picked it from Sitecore portal. Uh, this this shows exactly what is CDP and what is personalized here. So you have a CDP, you can buy a, that product separately, and you have Sitecore. personally which can be purchased separately and you can also buy both together which is called smart hub cdp so individually they can serve the purpose as well as um, combined they can provide you much more uh, features so what project i worked recently was individual piece of site to personalize so not with cdp so that's why i have more experience on the personalized side of it not cdp uh okay let's go to the our pieces this is like just run down on the basic things okay now from here onwards i'm just taking the personalized aspects only i'm not considering cdp anymore so integration okay there is a personalized saas platform as a developer i only i need to integrate with my applications or somewhere right like what are the integration options i have from site to personalized so one is site to engage sdk this is a very key aspect you can do it in multiple ways one is tms uh, tag management system so which is like uh, you can add this in the um which can add that google tag manager can add all this script you can add the script in google tag manager it can inject as well that's a tms i have not worked on that but i worked on client side script so where it is like any other uh, java javascript or jquery library or javascript library you are injecting your into your uh, layout and that is available then you can start 
then it can start the operations. I mean, you can start calling the functions, initialize the object, and all these things you can do. It. And also, there is a third way where client side and server side packages, which is npm packages. If at all you are working on latest projects on maybe React or Angular or Vue, it did not necessarily be site code JSS. It can be any of the front end framework websites. This npm package can be used, which is much simpler to work. So uh, the next option is REST API. We will come back to this in a moment again. So another one is REST API. Obviously, any SaaS platform has to provide a REST API because that's a standard, and so that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which kind of application, back end, front end, all these things. Anything can be integrated with REST API. So Cisco Personal also provides you a REST API, which can be integrated. And uh, Cloud SDK. This is new one. It is only available for XM Cloud and Next.js app if it is for JSS. Uh, but there are uh, some experiences, experiments are not available yet on Cloud SDK. So even some of the projects we are working on XM Cloud, still we had to use Engage SDK because uh, Cloud SDK doesn't cover all the features. So there is uh, on the documentation, there is a uh, site code documentation, there is this differences uh, page where it can show you different, like what is it, what is the difference between both these Engage SDK and Cloud SDK. Now going back to the first one, so again, Okay, when do you use client side scripts? So if you have a if you have a pure vanilla HTML website or you have a simple old uh, projects where MVC or uh, any other websites are there, any other PHP or any other websites, then you would tend to use client side scripting. But if you are having any latest projects on Node and all these things, you can use uh, npm packages. But if you are using any backend systems or if you are uh, uh, using any mobile apps and all, then you we would need to go to REST API. So that's where the usages are there. And uh, okay, I'll just quickly show you the demo. Uh, my whole goal is like not to talk through all these things. I'll just show you quickly how simple it is to integrate between a sample, simple application with personalized. Let me show you. Um, so this one I just downloaded. Uh, I've not done anything else. I just downloaded a sample uh, HTML website from freecss.com. And uh, let me run through index. I think it's on this side. So this is a website. So just a HTML website. Imagine this is hosted somewhere and we are trying to integrate a personalize in this project. I'm, I'm not taking Sitecore XP, Sitecore specific Sitecore projects because Sitecore personalized or CDK or CDP are meant for any application. It's not meant only for Sitecore applications. And we might tend to implement most of the, um, sorry, we might tend to implement most of the projects, other projects than Sitecore as well. So let's go and a uh, few basic things. Let me pull this um, Sitecore. Sandbox, uh, thanks to my company, we have uh, um, sandboxes. I mean, if you are having a partner or customer, I mean, if, then you will be having some sandboxes. So we, this is a six sandbox, I'm just using it. So first of all, I'll just try to create, so this is a run website. We need a client key, which is specific to that environment or the sandbox. And you need a point of sale. Point of sale, you can consider it as like a website or particular channel where you are trying to integrate with it. So these two things are main and other things are a few points. But let me go and get first basic information. Uh, okay, I also opened the same website in uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm trying to integrate here. And also let me open JS and I'll create a new file. Personalize, yes. Um, there was a small, there was a lot of review comments some places when what I saw personalize where yes or Z, but they are using Z. So I kept using all the places Z only, not uh, the other way. Let me, I 
will take directly from the website. I will not take anywhere else. Right here, personalize integration. Um, yeah. Okay. It's preparing to integrate. Walkthroughs. Yeah. I'll not do anything else. So if I copy this. I'll explain in a moment once I paste this. So I need a client ID. Uh, so I can go and get it from my sandbox. You would have company information here. Then just copy this. Yep. Okay, that's a, so this is, if at all you are, when you are implementing solutions, uh, I mean, when you are implementing for different environments in your solutions, obviously this is the one it goes to the environment variables. Okay, the next one is target uh, URL. Okay, this this target URL uh, is like where this, uh, this particular thing is hosted. That's the main thing. So if it is uh, something, which URL we are doing? Uh, let me go to the, um, where is that piece uh, of there? Yeah. yeah, so this is a stream API target endpoint. It depends on where your uh, environment is hosted. So mine is, or ours is like AP region. So I'm copying this. And point of sale, this is what I'm saying is specific to a particular channel because one particular person is a sandbox or the environment can be connected to multiple websites or multiple channels in your thing, uh, in your business. So if you want to differentiate because you want to run experience on particular channel or particular website, so you have to differentiate. So that point of sale will come to help. So point of sale is I, I can go here, sorry, point of sale. So I have like a lot of them. I just created yesterday, but I can create again. Uh, run demo. SCG demo market again. I think these are the variables just that nothing uh, uh, specific about it, but language and timeout. This timeout is a critical one where your session lives for these many minutes. So I just create. That's why you see there are 30, 40 for testings and all. So I'll just, all you need is this copy. Uh, okay. And cookie domain, I'll ignore this. If you don't give it by default takes that, uh, whatever the, your main uh, domain. Uh, so that will take, I don't want to give. And cookie expiry day, sorry, comma. And uh, for server cookie mode, because we are not doing, uh, NPM packages way, NPM packages only has this uh, server cookie mode because then you can set the cookie on the server, but it is not possible. Uh, UTM parameters that has the Google tag and all these things can be added. And very key aspect in all this is web personalization. This has to be enabled, enabled true so that you can do any personalization or banners running on the website. So all this, and then we are just right triggering uh, init event. So once init event runs, this gets sent, then the engage object gets initialized. So let's just delete. I can, I think 4.3, yeah, that's correct. 4.3 is the one. So I'm closing, I'm, I'm saving this and uh, going to the index. Last, I'm just running it here. Great source, JS, personalize. Okay, so I run this and uh, I'm just running it uh, um, local server for that HTML sample website. So I'll take this URL. 
So this is the one website loaded now on the local host 8080. So if I right click on inspect, how would I know whether this is integrated? I'll show you in a moment. So this has, okay, there is something going on here. Uh, oh shit, one second. Uh, what happened? Fail to the mission. Okay, this is fine, but what happened to? Oh, sorry, one second network. Okay. AJ engage. Sorry, one second. HTTPS API engage. Uh, yeah, for it be two target URL release API engage site called cloud IO. Yeah, that's correct. Your demo, sorry, your point of sale is correct. And engage in it, that's correct. Okay, let me go back. Yeah, this is created. This is runs SUG. This is fine. And I believe it is not different for the company information. Yeah, that client key is correct. Uh, just a second, let me check what is missing here. Um, the browser. Application, okay, it is created. Okay, there is something is calling. Okay, I'll come back to this in a moment, but otherwise the integration is worked. I think it is calling something of web limit, but not sure what it was. I have seen this error before, but not in this. Uh, yeah, this is fine, but okay. Okay, how do I test usually is that you can just do engage object and uh, yeah, that get browser ID. Or, I mean, you don't need this as well. So you got this browser ID, right? You can copy this or you can go to the application and you see there are like multiple cookies got generated, BID and all. So one with BID and your client key, that's what this is so you copy this and you go to the portal and just go to the event viewer you have to type bid and colon and just type search so it didn't register okay got it mm -hmm. Something has gone. It has created from the creation, but I think it is not able to pass the information. Is that something blocking in the security? But this is something not blocking anything. Uh, yeah, channel parameters, client key, channel web. Yes, correct. Request payload. Request contains invalid point. Oh, invalid point, valid point of sale, SUG. Okay, sorry. Why it is invalid? Run SUG. Uh, I'm not sure if there was any limitations, but yeah, there is a run SUG. Okay, I'll connect with the existing one. I'm not sure if there was any limitation on uh things yesterday i created this sug demo it was worked so okay i'll use this one then for now later i will check this whether is there any limitations on the point of sale uh i'll save it go back here just refresh yeah this should be okay now 
But if you go to application, just copy this BID value, you will get multiple uh, cookies created. And if you go back to the event viewer now, event viewer BID and just copy. Yeah, so it got uh, the, the connection has happened and you know, whoever is browsing that website now getting registered here. Not any information yet. Uh, so it is just getting uh, just ordinary flow executions and just information. You just you have the browser uh, point of sale and this browser. So let me go back. I'll show you the next uh, one. In the meantime, I'll also say I'll also send one view event. Let me send. Okay, because we initialized. But we have, we, I mean, as I said, like the CDP or personal, you have a behavioral transactional, all these things. So Sitecore provides you a lot of events for this. So one of the event is, uh, uh, just let me say, I'll copy it from other place so that it is much quicker. So where, I'm just passing you here itself because it's loading on each page. So if I move between the pages, ideally it has to register, but I'm only adding it in the index space. So for now, uh, this path name, I can get var path name equal to uh, mainly a location. Just to get a sense of whether this is getting registered or not. Okay, save this. And again, go back here. Okay. Now go back to the, okay. Where is my view event? One second, it did in the JavaScript. That's one problem is whether that got, ah, yeah, that's a mistake. Location, okay. Anyway, if you are working on a front end technologies, you will have proper validations and everything here. But I'm just running on the HTML website. I don't have compilation or anything, but it should be okay. Uh, yeah, so if I see it, there is a view event so got registered here. I'll stop it there. Uh, we did the initialization on the HTML website and uh, and also send the view event. So that's that's the simple piece. The next demo we will see. I'll run through a few more slides and the next demo we will see. We'll try to personalize something on the website. So let's go back to the slides. I'll take all the questions at last. I saw that a lot of were popping. So I'll I'll take all the questions at last. Yes. And okay, come back here. So that was a very basic. So you saw that it is much easy. All you are doing is you are getting a, a script, which is CDN Sitecore Engage 1.4.3 current version. So you are getting that uh, JavaScript. And now you are initializing that with your uh, connection to the sandbox or your environment. And next step, you can do like whatever the view events, whatever the click events. Uh, if you want to send some order information, all these things, you can do it. So that's the whole idea of it. And if you go to the next, uh, I did this integration, this kind of integration on one of the websites. So I'll share this because this is the sample running in my local, right? So node version incompatibility. I was working on some node, uh, some front end framework website itself, but that was old website actually. We had to implement in that. But the problem is we couldn't use the, um, uh, NPM packages. NPM packages are much easy to use in, in, a, in a way. But the problem was uh, NPM packages of uh, Sitecore Engage requires Node 18. But uh, our website, which was that front end framework, was on Node 12. So we couldn't use it. So we had to rely on our client SDK. We, I mean, client engage SDK. Uh, sorry, client SDK. Problem is now you are trying to inject the JavaScript code into the TypeScript and node that project. So that's a more painful. If you had an NPM package, it's much easy. 
but you are like trying to use the javascript and again you have to create all this typescript code and windows any kind of thing if you have ever worked then you will know if at all you need to use javascript libraries inside a node project without npm packages uh, that's a node version incompatibility you have to keep an eye on it and uh, security headers because you are getting from cdn multiple cdns and also i have pasted that url right that um, ap region i mean that um, asia pacific region all these things so obviously you have based on your security headers configuration your project you have to enable some of these connection source and script source and all so you have to watch out for that so security headers this thing i will explain another again one more time later but ideally overall personalized you have to understand one piece critical so when i integrated i integrated everything next i am not calling site core i mean we are not calling as a developer like okay site core personalized i'm calling give me some data i'll i'll put a banner here or i'll put a personalization here no it's other way around site core personalized will inject that it was, we had a hard time to make few people understand that's why i had to put this question so we are not calling site core personalized site core personalized will call and inject that uh, i mean will inject it's not i frames or it's not anything and also it's not calling just to get that some messages or something so it's a different way i'll show you in other demo and uh, this takes to the next point if at all you are working on normal web applications i mean if it uh, is for an mvc or uh, normal applications you navigate between the pages the pages reloads right page is fully is reloading and how site core personalized work is at the page reloads it triggers the experiences behind the scene so we are not calling it it triggers it and then it site core personalized will check if there are any uh, experiences or experiments that need to run on this page then it will do it but obviously if you are coming to the spa applications you don't have full page reload all you have is navigation between the routes you are navigating pay, i mean single page applications if anyone is wondering you don't have a full page reloads so that time site core provided a way for us to we have to take ownership and call this trigger experiences whenever we want so that's one thing to keep in mind i i was working on spa application and node and all ultimately we had to use this and uh, just a point of note you have to understand the stream api all the functions that send a, send view event um, sorry view events click events all the identity event all these events just a pretty basic javascript function like what objects what can be again so that that is very critical for you to integrate so that you can troubleshoot the issues or anything you want extra you can do it quickly so those were the integrations let me move on so those are the integration side like you are your code you are doing it so if you are looking at personalized side what all things are available in personalized so there are a lot of new terminology around and some of these you might have already come across maybe with the different terms in different systems so let just quickly run through and i can show you in personalized as well in the sandbox so programmable so program basically programmable is a single kind of a unit where you you write a code in the decisions and all so this is where uh, actually as a developer we write some code inside personalized programmable and decision model decision model if at all you have seen something like uh, logic apps uh, azure function azure logic apps not exactly similar but i'm telling you logic apps you drag and drop something and you make connection between the um, uh these nodes and you are trying to flow look for some flow it is something like that decision model it is a very powerful feature inside site core cdp because as a developer we would be working mostly with this because most of the flows most of the customizations whatever we want to do it we will be doing it in the decision model uh for the any of the experiences web template is a very straightforward one where you are building some html css javascript you combine and create a web template in site core personalized which will be act as a your experiment or experience so this is a plain your banner or some other uh, component on your website 
where the content is also managed in your uh, sidecar personalized or it can be dynamically pulled from your uh, some other systems connections if at all you are connecting with some other system from sidecar personalized sidecar personalized provides you a connections feature where you don't need to write code all you need to go and give is just a rest api endpoint and client secret and what are the client key and all and just make a connection it will be it will be there so whenever you are using in some other experiences you can just use that connection you pass the parameter whatever is required you fetch the data so you don't write a code for this connections and triggers uh, multiple experiences are there multiple uh, personalizations banners and all these things are there triggers is something like okay i i i am doing some activity i want to i want sidecar personalized to get triggered based on this activity and do some activity uh, i mean do some other action so something like that so triggers uh, will you uh, will give us and also most of the time we we hook uh, we use any web hooks to send some data from personalized to some external system maybe email maybe send an sms something like that based on some triggers uh, variants are like uh, any component you just create a multiple variant so that you can do it for the ab testing or all these things experiences experiments are the major pieces which combines all these things experiences are that uh, multiple experiences are there inside core personalized but ultimately it's a it's a banner or any of the um, web components in terms of web experiences where you show on the website and experiments are ab testing where you do the mostly similar way as experiences but you are doing a two variants where you show 50% this 50% that so that's kind of thing and uh, let me show you a simple walk through so that we can make sense of what is this terminologies um i will make it quick so um now we made a connection between the site we are trying to create a new banner so let me go experiences Uh, I'll stop this one. This was one I tested last yesterday. This is the one it was showing there. Um, okay, close. Go back. Um, there are three types of triggers are there. As I'm sorry, experiences are there. Interactive trigger and all. but mostly we are dealing with the web now because we are integrating with the website so if we create web um i'll see run export yeah uh, just something related to that website uh remember once you created this identifier something it will automatically create an id and this will be like that so in future if you delete this and you are coming back and creating this run ports run sport experience it will by default put underscore one or something like that so you once it is created even if it is deleted that id is gets registered there so it won't create use the same ids so just keep in mind when you are implementing so you will see that there like i deleted why why it's not still in same name same id so i'll just create and uh, this is our play area this will be exactly similar for experiments as well so that's why i'm showing here now uh, how the all the connection all the pieces gets connected here now i'm telling create a variant obviously so this is the experience i want to show to the user so i am creating a variant and sidecore comes with a lot of out of the box components where you can just use that and uh, input your data i'll just use out of the box so i'm just going to use uh, uh alert bar and you see this this is previewing here and uh, i can see this and all the all the experience so i'll go it's a top you can put a bottom or anything that's fine title uh, uh, uh and just putting something uh here are all the big games button 
Thanks. Okay. So this is fine example and all. Closing button color. I'm just saving it. Okay. This is a simple banner, which is existing banner I've done. Otherwise, we can, I mean, we usually create our own our own uh, HTML and component. I will show you just that bit. So this is what it looks like. Okay, what is that code is? So you have a HTML and I was able to input some of the data, right? This is the notation for that. So if you want to create some uh, variable, so you have that double braces and all these things, brackets, and what is the text type is string. Then the moment you put this, the um, title text will be a string and you have different fields as well. So this is what as a developer we need to know. How does it all work? And second thing is CSS, obviously all the styling and uh, JavaScript. So here they are doing a lot of this uh, complicated things, but don't worry. It can be as simple as just um, insert. You can just get rid of all these things. It can be just simple as insert uh, HTML before body, something like that. Uh, just go back. Go back. So I uh, know I configured the banner here. I mean alert bar, alert bar to show me on that page, and you can do a page targeting like which page you want to show. So either you can target like specific pages or you can target all the pages. So that leave it all the pages. Filter is the one very critical here. Once if you add, you have you can add a conditional filters. I will do the point of sale because we don't we have a lot of point of sale like. Consider as a lot of websites. So I don't want to show this experience on different website, right? I only want to show it in this this banner on particular uh, websites which are connected to this point of sale. So I'm configuring it to SUG demo. Uh, so this will only run on SUG demo. This will not run on any other uh, point of sales. So the decisioning. I'll come back to this just in a moment and goals and notifications. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any business logics or anything. That's why I'm not using the issue. Otherwise, if I use this, then I can create the decision as well. So I'll just start. Okay, I don't want to add goal. I don't track performance. And you can set like um, schedule or you can do it for forever. I'll do it a bit more quick. I think I'm taking a lot of time. Okay, I'll just show you. Okay, this experience is live. Now, if I go here, okay. Fail to load it in OR. Did it had the logic of like not showing, but that's fine. I'll show you. Uh, good thing is it's not showing, right? Let's troubleshoot it. We can troubleshoot it using uh, URL and you go to preview, enter text. So you give this URL and preview. Most common way we do it in just a basic test first. You see that there is some uh, bar is showing. Okay, reference box server is not defined. Box server library, yeah, that's fine. You see this till here, all the things have passed. Variant HTML reference box server is not defined. Let me go and see what it is. Um, Ideally, it should not be like what is box over. I'm not. Uh, this is box over library. That's fine. And you have page targeting, you have addition. Okay, one second. Let me see if there were any other errors here in the console, Chrome extension, and uh, application. Yeah, there is the uh, ones. 
go here and not a good oh sorry i can run that one as well transport experience i can do this is another testing i can do prints okay condition filter failed that did not pass the filter condition okay one second so this is one way of testing is where you can call paste this user and try to see if they have any way condition filter failed uh, one second was it SUG demo that's correct now if i go back uh sorry not go back if i don't find it in two minutes i'll stop the debugging i don't want to take the time in debugging i can tell you what was the error later uh filter yeah the point of sale condition was correct yeah this visit is to scg demo that's correct oh you are complaining filter is not good. Uh, uh, Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll just open this. Um, where is this? I can open this in incognito and see how does it register. Because you are in different browser and different browser session, so it will have a different ID. Let me go back and test for this. Uh, uh, okay condition filter fail. okay i'll check this later that's fine otherwise uh, ideally you would be able to see the banner let me see the other one if, if i enable that that whether that works uh go back the previous banner it was exactly similar um draft um, oh, sorry, paused. Builder's experience. Build, yeah, it's the same exactly. Show this experience to visitors past the condition. Yes. Edit the filter. Yeah, this is visit is a CD demo. Uh, start. Demo words are not good today. Publish, publish. Okay. Let me see if this is working. Oh yeah, this is coming. I think something is messed up in that experience, but otherwise this is how it comes. Uh, you have the experience there and it is coming. You see that I have not written any code inside uh, our uh, Visual Studio code to fetch this experience. This is what I was telling, like this is other way around. We are not calling Sidecore Personalized to send me the banner. It is internally at the end, it is calling the uh, trigger experiences where it, it runs all the experiences in, I mean, it runs where, what are the experiences it needs to run? It finds the filters and it runs it. If this, this matches the filters and it will output that uh, banner or the alert bar. So that's how it works. That's a different way of working there. And uh, let me go back to the slides. I can just show you a few more things, or I can show you just a bit more pieces here. Okay, if you are going to the um, program, uh, programmable, I will tell you. Programmable means here, whatever the conditions we create, whatever the code we write. So if you see simple, this complete gel, you see that there are like a lot of code we are writing, guest sessions, navigating on all this. This is the JavaScript code, but server-side JavaScript. So you write the code in JavaScript, but it, write, it executes everything in the server-side JavaScript. You don't need to import something and all, but you write plain uh, JavaScript here. And the similar way you keep writing, like that is the conditions and you go to decision, decisioning. I think I hope I have something, yeah. So if you see here, decisioning, so this is what I was saying, like where you build some multiple uh, um, 
kind of a logic apps where you drag and drop something but logic apps is top down execution but here is a bottom up execution so you are getting a input data of guest then you are doing a programmable if i do a click on this again you are writing some code you are trying to read okay what is this section and what you want to do you're trying to fetch the geolocation city so ah, shit. i always do that i always forget that it is tabs inside so if i open this this is the tab and uh, you have another program bill here it is just a um, this is created by i think decision template so or it, it is just having a uh, not code code is there it is behind the scenes uh, developer has implemented but they gave you the just a nice ui for the marketers so that's how it all works decisioning maybe some other time we can explore for the this is the major piece we work like how to how to connect between multiple systems how to feed in the data how to do all the logic and everything so all the logic runs here and uh, if i go to the experiences just now we created uh what was the one live so if i go to here if i want to do some logics here i'll just add a decisioning here whatever i created in other other uh, other place i'll just tag the decisioning so it will run the full flow uh, and if i go back to the uh, web templates connections so let me show you just a simple connections i don't think so we have anything but connections is a place where you are creating multiple connections to third party systems you just create it so you can create a data system ai or destination if you are sending some data or you are like connecting with some data system so here you create something the main thing i will not show you but if i go next this is what it is uh, i worked with one of the connection connecting with salesforce which is with oauth so oauth connection then you have request and mapping with the responses and all so uh, this is all we configure here and this rec this connection once it is established here you can use in multiple places in overall site co personalize so that's the piece about connection um, experiments have exactly similar ui as experiences so you see the build summary just that you have a original and multiple variants here otherwise you have page filter decisioning goals and all once you get familiarized with the experiences process then more or less exactly similar is experiments we don't need to learn something new uh, let me go back to the slides again I'll, I'll show you a few more i'll just run quick and they'll take questions i think i have a lot of questions okay from a developer role so ideally what are the projects i work what are the project i worked on we have two people one is a strategy or marketer another one is obviously developer me so other than architect or someone is involving with the other systems and all so strategy or marketer's understanding is what is required like what i want a flow of here i mean that 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 thing they would define but obviously developer has to help to make that whatever the flow possible so that's when the developer comes in and what do we do inside personalize so what kind of programming you do as i said like we do server side javascript we do all the web template decision templates offer templates programmables conditions and js models all these things we do inside personalize everything is related on server side javascript so we do that and another piece is this is a server side javascript and another important thing is when you are uh, writing the web templates where i had shown you html css javascript and api tag uh, everyone aware of templating engines right where uh, handlebar templates we used to use in uh, a while back like where you have html and from javascript when it runs you want to inject that values there it's exactly similar like that so here they are using apache free marker uh, templating engine so we need to get familiarized with this as well so we need to know how this this syntax is work and all so if we know if we understand server side javascript and free marker we are good to work on site co personalize implementations everything we can figure out along the way so these are the two key pieces uh, which we mostly do anything related to programming here i am not talking about css obviously hopefully you will get a front end help uh, on that and if i move on decisioning model i just covered anyway it is just that mainly all the rules and logics built in the here 
and this is also called dictioning model and notation standard you see there is a uh, down i mean export and import buttons so this this whole thing can be exported and imported into multiple environments so this when you export that will be a xml that is called dmn standard so some domain model notation standard that's what we will do let's move on to my learnings few learnings from my implementation one is connections so as i shown you connection like as i said like salesforce connection i am just making between this most pain point is when you are implementing it uh, once you created the connection you started using it in multiple places and uh, maybe the development team or whoever they created that apis they said like okay we are creating some new uh, new response variables or maybe some thing we are deleting the problem is we can't just go and update in the connection so connections are read only once it is created we have to recreate there is no update so we have to duplicate that connection and again make the change so it's a bit of work when we are doing it until it is stabilized then you don't need to do work much but bit of a pain point while i was working i figured out i think there's a lot of tussle happened between security team and us like when we are implementing they want like no client secret is in the we are pasting in our auth connection and it is in sales personalized i don't want it there use it from some azure key vault or somewhere but our site personalized doesn't have that option of like you can read from somewhere else you have to paste it there but good thing is we were able to convince them because client secret once you paste in the auth uh, connections tab it cannot be read by anyone even by you you cannot read it once you paste it say and establish the connection you will not be able none of the i mean even admins can't read it so super admins or whatever the roles so that's one good thing and uh, if conditions i just shown you a point of sale condition right like where okay target this uh, experience only to the sug demo point of sale so that's one condition obviously i will have multiple conditions the problem i have seen here is i don't know whether it was deliberate or it was some other reason there is no way i can put a multiple conditions okay this and this and no there is nothing so i had to go and build a custom conditions a custom condition by combining multiple like three four conditions together maybe it is for performance reasons or whatever the reasons there is no way in the system to in the personalized to provision multiple conditions so a bit of a pain um, i had to go and make like multiple conditions all together but otherwise even if you have out of the box out of the box conditions like two conditions if you want to use it i don't see a way if anyone come across any way you can tell me otherwise i don't see a way i have to manually uh, write a co custom condition combining these two codes so and yeah this is one thing i learned like i mean again it's a basic fundamentals of the coding like if you are want to check something check as early as possible and get out of the execution because your performance is big big aspect here so don't i mean guest sessions and everything you browse through just check what all the things you wanted like early and just return it don't put like if 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 and all just check some things and if you want a truth or false i mean true or false then just get out of it and decisioning model uh, decision model whatever i shown you that nodes multiple nodes like uh, input offers and all these things sidecore also suggests that but it's basic understanding like you don't put like hell lot of logic there like multiple nodes because it's all need to be executed and remember when it is executing i loaded the page on the my browser internally sidecore person is executing the experience whole experience it has to complete very quickly and show me the banner or show me some personalization right if my personalization opens like long i mean takes long time then there is no point of it so the decisioning model the performance is big aspect so we can't keep connecting between thousands of i mean sorry two three systems and two three big business logics and also keep it minimum simple again in based, based on your business rules and uh, web templates uh i don't know if you have worked on sitecore uh, normal projects you might have seen right where you write uh, um, if you have a banner alert alert or if you have cta uh, call to action text box uh, call to action box 
So where you have a, a link, text, image, and everything. Maybe if there is no image, background image, you don't want to show whole thing. So something like, uh, so you will add if condition of that image is not available, then don't render any HTML. You we write in uh, MVC CSS HTML, right? So similar like that, sometimes we have seen the scenarios where uh, I need to write some if conditions in HTML. So I could write it with free marker, as I said, like a Apache free marker, where if this variable is not present, then I don't want whole banner to be shown, not the empty HTMLs also. Just don't render anything. It will be much better. So I could use this. I had to dig a bit and finally I found like oh, I could use a free marker checks. So that's why I'm telling you, you need to get familiarized with free marker, all the, uh, how they write, how the templating engine works there. And uh, last one, in the experience, uh, I had shown you the experience, the alert bar and all. I added the variant, uh, the web template, and everything is fine. If you make the HTML changes there, the problem is it is a copy of your web template. Uh, I mean, not a problem. It is a good. It is a copy of your web template. So don't get confused. Oh, I'm modifying here. Does it affect there? It is not a um, clone of it. It's not like call by reference. It is a call by value. So it is just having a copy here. You're making all the CSS, HTML, and all for that experience. So the main will be main one will be still intact. But this has a problem when we were building a custom one. So obviously, when you are building it, custom one, you make the changes there and you wonder why it is not reflecting in your experience because these both are copies. So you have to make actual change in experience. But if you keep changing in the experience, your original one will be too much differentiated. So until it stabilizes a bit, we have to make changes in multiple places. So these are some of the learnings. And just the last slide, which you already just <laughs> for various reasons, whatever we saw, there is a QA tool, which is most helpful when you are troubleshooting something. And also there is a preview API, which I had just shown you. And also there is an event viewer, which can be browsed. So there are like, these are multiple things which you can troubleshoot uh, if something is not working. And uh, if you're not aware, there is like two certifications, CDP and personalized separated, 30 questions each. I think this is the least number of questions on any certification in terms of site code. Usually we have 50, but this is 30. And I'm not prepared so much on other aspects. Only I followed most of the site code uh, learning portal. I mean, sorry, learning.sitecode.com, all the e-learnings there, CDP for technical users and personalized for technical users. It covers business users as well as technical users. And also a lot of documentation reading. So I just read all the nuances of the documentation, which helped me uh, not only to clear the certification, but mainly to understand the full aspects of it, how the whole system works. Okay. Um, that ends my um, presentation and just brief demos. Uh, sorry if you're going a long, uh, more time. I'll just try to get a few questions one by one. Uh, luckily, I have I can see the questions in Teams chat. Uh, yeah, this is the good question. Poonam has asked. Generally, we are keeping customer data in Salesforce. How site query is different from it, and why clients should choose it? So yeah, I had this question as well. Like, what is the difference between the Salesforce and all? Salesforce has more of a marketing information. Again, I can explain a bit differently, but customer relationship management is like particular sale has more information from this sale, whatever the information you can get from this marketing, whatever the information you got, that kind of information contains in CRM. But whereas CDP, it's it's more generic in a sense, all the information is there. So there are like uh, good good articles out there which differentiates between both of them. Please read. I, maybe I'll not be able to explain it properly. Uh, I'm not getting proper analogy uh, top of my head, but yeah, I can share you a few links as well. I, even I had the same question, like why? How does it make sense? How identity resolution work? Um, identity resolution works in a way where Again, there is a good documentation, but I'll just briefly explain it. So um, 
as i said like you have a custom identifier so i didn't show you identity event if you are sending an identity event you you can choose whether email as an identity or that has to be configured inside code cdb or uh, maybe your crm id maybe you have some other member id in your portals so that can be sent configured as a identities in side core cdps then the system will go whenever you send an identity event with this information it will try to match all the existing customers with this ids if there is an id match that whatever the identity rules you have mentioned then it will map with that customer and then it will all the interactions will go into that merge with that if there is no customer is identified then it will be as in it will be make an entry as a new customer uh, uh, in that so the identity rules definition is important in cdp like what kind of a rules you want to define for that system what kind of identity so good thing as i said like you don't need a pie uh, that personally identifiable information so there is no need of sensitive data as well you can just use your member id crm ids those as well you can use um what are the different authentication mechanisms support while integrating with different devices and platforms uh, authentication mechanism uh, you mean to say uh, uh, if you punam if you are here can you please ask i mean uh, i whatever i understood i'll explain let me know if it is you are looking for something else so this is like uh, not authentication mechanism this is like you are uh, putting a google tag manager client keys and all right it is more like similar like that but if you are using a rest api then you are making that info making that calls and all these things then uh, you have a uh, obviously api keys a traditional api keys where you can create an api key and then use that for the authentication mechanisms but if you are talking about any uh, website integrations with sitecore personalize all you are using is a client key and the point of sale so it's more similar way as you are exposing that uh, your google tag manager and all yeah let me know if you are looking for some other information maybe that that was not it what is the difference between sitecore cdp do we need sitecore cdp to use sitecore personalize uh, no sumit we don't need sitecore cdp to be used in sitecore personalize as i said like i just worked on a project without sitecore cdp so that was pure sitecore personalized we don't have cdp there so again it depends on multiple reasons like some clients might have already an existing cdp they want to use personalized so or they might have a different system altogether so it depends but that's why sitecore has separated these two into two products but both will go hand in hand um, sometimes some clients we see differentiation but most of the clients i believe prefer smart hub cdp which is a combination of both cdp and personalize and uh, i'll not go into too detail in the differences because again there is like very standard answers but differences in mainly is your cdp is just a customer data store there you are all the interactions events everything is getting stored there but you don't have any way to act on it you are you can batch it you can segment it and all so that is a cdp but personalize it is not having any customer data and all uh, you it will be there like little bit but it is the one mainly runs your all the experiences experimentations and all so bit tricky when someone has cdp maybe they have some different personalized system or maybe if you are using personalize we had already a different cdp system so it depends on the client but uh, there is a it feels overlap but there is a good differentiation between two different system, two systems sometimes a large number of requests is sent in a short time span from multiple devices can you give some details how to handle it is there any really rate limiting on it i think there is but i'm not explored that part yet because ours is i'm not and also i have not explored how the licensing options work i believe i i know for a fact that there are the events how many events i can send there is a limitations on the license so i bet there will be a rate limiting as well uh, i think this was asked by annie uh, but i am not explored much further i know only that uh, um, there is a events only you have certain number of events you can send or to the system based on your licenses 
So I don't know how exactly that those licenses tires in Setco personally the CDB. Is it provide some sort of connector for easy integration with external app? Currently, I don't see any uh, easy integration, but I believe uh, the Sitecore Connect is for that purpose. There is another product, Sitecore Connect. Again, I have not worked on that much on the Sitecore Connect. So Sitecore Connect is a system where you can connect with multiple systems there. Uh, um, but yeah, that's uh, related to that. Um, what are the challenges or limitations you face while using personalized? Not the challenges or anything. Um, challenges anyway, I covered. I don't know when, when this was asked, like it was 7.19. So sorry, my time 7.19, which is very early on the uh, time. But I have shared all my learnings on the integration as well as in the personalized, just a bullet points. I hope that answers your question. Analytics is supported by Sitecore. It does not provide to create a custom analytics report. How about Sitecore Pro personalize? Uh, I think we can create. Uh, there is a bit of a differentiation between Sitecore CDP provides our report and Sitecore. So site see where we have a bit of an individual level customer we can drill through and what the person has done we can all see it. But whereas particular experience or particular experiment how it performed can be seen in. Uh, Sitecore personalized. So there is a difference between, I think, simple way to understand is Sitecore, uh, sorry, Sitecore in XP, we had experience profile, which is you can see in uh, uh, CDP, where experience profile is specific to that user information and all. But if you go to this side uh, where um, uh, Sitecore personalized, which is more experience analytics, I have not created any reports out of this, but I bet you would be able to do. Uh, yes, out of the box reports. Uh, as I said, like I have not configured goals when we are creating uh, experiences, but you configure the goals. There are a lot of configurations on the analytics. I hope we could take the some strategies help in that, like what analytics they want exactly to see. So whether they want to click or whether what kind of a tracking they want to do there. In case of multi-regional organization, can we create custom roles and user assign them specific portal section access and reports? Uh, I think portal you meant like Sitecore cloud portal. Um, I not worked. I think someone can answer it if you're at all. You have I'm only was working in Australia region. I'm not checked in multi region how it works. Um, I think this is not specific to Sitecore personalized, but this can be specific to any of that any of the apps multi regional. Uh, sorry, Jack, I not worked in that multi regional. Things till now. How to use and configure personalize in case of multiple environments like dev staging prod? How to separate each environment data analytics reports? Um, case of that's a good question. Um, um, problem is, I mean, most of the time, at least whatever the clients I worked on, they have two pro two environments, at least one non-prod and one prod. So the non-prod is the one which we are connecting with all the systems. So dev, local dev, staging, or uh, UAT, all the systems. But whereas prod is a clean one, which is only connects with the prod. That's how we are handling in, in general. Uh, the question was how to use and configure. Sorry, I was not reading the questions. Sorry, I was like, Looking at and answering it. Sorry, I should have read. Like, I'm not sure who you guys are reading the questions there. How to use and configure personalize in case of multiple environments like dev, staging, prod, etc. How to separate each environment data and analytics reports. So that's a good question. I have not seen. Uh, I mean, between the environments is fine. I don't think I have explored enough in the. If there is one environment, if you connect from multiple, is there any way of separation the analytics? The problem is what I did. You can send an ex extra attribute to the data, maybe play around with that because there are a lot of attributes you can send extra in with your view events and all these things. Maybe you can play with that, but I don't think any way to separate uh, with out of the box way where you have a dev staging and all. No, I don't think there is. Is there any sandbox available to try outside to personalize? Um, 
uh, SaaS is good world uh, in a way, but I think sidecore learning aspect, it is still a pain, like age old problems uh, where we didn't have any license.xml files to work with XP or XM installations. Now more challenges, all these SaaS platforms until unless you have a client or a partner, you work for a client or you work for a partner where they have a sandboxes. I don't think so. It's a problem. I think MVPs get, maybe Rohan can tell, MVPs get some sandboxes. But other than that, I don't think so. There is any sandboxes available. Do you have personalized exam dumps? Uh, sorry, I don't have any. But I think there are some, now one or few people have written all the, uh, sorry, all the things, mainly topics, what, kind of topics it covered in the study from this they elaborated what are the topics were mentioned in the study guide they elaborated and covered few aspects of it those are good not exactly dumps but those are good it gives you some sense of it can we integrate personally with sidecore xp yes we can integrate but i personally i don't see a reason maybe if you good way to integrate with sidecore xm where you don't have a personalizer anything but if it is already an xp how do we do it i mean what is the purpose of it okay leaving the purpose as i said like decisioning model is a key aspect in all this so when you want to integrate so if you want to feed in some data if you want uh do some logics and all uh, all these things and also some triggered experiences some interactive experiences so there are like multiple ways to do we need a clear definition of how it can, I mean, how we want to do it. But there are ways inside core personalized. Just a building blocks I had shown. If you use that building blocks, we can be able to do it. A good study, I mean, good use case also. Just, uh, okay, how can I connect this piece to this? How, what what information I would require? How do I pass information back and forth from XP to uh, personalize? What, how do we then? How can we set up custom analytic dashboard and set code to track key performance indicator, KPIs and all? This is what I have not set goals and all. That's where you would set that KPIs and everything. I have not shown you the experiences uh, analytics part of it. While I was defining experiences at uh, goals, I just skipped like I don't, I don't want to track any goals. But the, there is the one you track all the goals, what KPIs you want. Dashboard, I actually I am not sure. I think there are like already a dashboards available, but I have not created any custom dashboard. Um, can we use point of sale to different shared environment specific to specific? Uh, can we use point of sale to differentiate environment specific? Uh, good idea, but um, yeah, it can be done. I don't know if there are any other impacts, but uh, analytics wise, yeah, the moment you log into uh, any sandbox, the Page it loads is all with the dashboards. The top right corner, the first filter, it is the point of sale. So that's there. Uh, but then how do you target the experiences is the problem. Because point of sale, you're targeting some experiences to that particular point of sale. You don't want to target to all the experiences, right? So different way of thinking. But yeah, good point of view as well. Maybe we can use the point of sale in that aspect as well. Ah, okay, a uh, lot of questions.